Okay. Turn to page 54. 54, let us begin Pesach. And in order to get to Pesach, we have to talk about the calendar. As we call it in Hebrew, Zman. Did we discuss already Zman, the idea of Zman in this class? No, no last semester. So let's do it again. In the context of really, we're going to learn it mostly from Pesach. And it goes like this. We are obsessed with time. We are obsessed with it. Everything we do as a people is wrapped around time, or in Hebrew, zman. Now, the word zman does mean time. But the word zman has another related word, which is... Zimun. Zimun. I think it's somewhere. Did I do it this last semester? semester, semester, last semester. Not this semester, last semester. Yeah. Right, so maybe we're not here last semester. Zimun is related to Zman. When do we make a Zimun, Kayla, do you know? On Shabbos, right. Actually, any time that... Oh, we, well, I'm right, eating. three men are eating as a minimum, Some having actually women, women too, if they're by themselves, by the way. You can make a Zimun really? as well, yes. The word Zimun means to prepare. To prepare. What's the connection between the word of time, zman, and zimun to prepare? Time we is prepare for us. Because time is prepared for us. Very good. Time is prepared for us from when? From when? From the beginning of time itself. So time itself is a thing. It was created. Just like Hashem made space, Hashem made time. When Hashem created the world, he created a physical world. He also created a world of time. Which means Hashem is outside of time. He's outside of Zman. That's why one of the main names of Hashem, the Yud with a He, and the Vav with a He, is actually a contraction of Aya, Over, and Yeh. Was is and always will be. Hashem is not held inside time. So before there was creation, there was no time. We cannot understand that because we cannot understand a world without time. Because by definition, the world is made up of place, makom, and zman, time. When we live in this world, we are trapped in these two realities, time and space. So time was prepared, just like the world was created. Time was created, it was Zamen Hashem created and prepared time for us. So time follows a pattern. Time follows, a, time is something. Now it's something that we travel through. Remember this? We did this in the yeah. introductory classes. Yeah. We travel through time. Says Rav Dessler, just like you travel through space, you walk around, you travel through time as well. Time is a reality. It's like a real tangible thing that you can relate to. You can relate to a space. You can relate to a time itself. That's why it says the Maharal, you can follow on page 54. That was Rav Dessler on top that we travel through time. He says, Kol davar tzarech el zman v'yeshlo ed miuchad. Everything is contingent on time, and each thing has its own particular time, right? As King Solomon said in Kohelet, in Ecclesiastes, everything, the kol yesh zman, everything has its season, and there's a time for everything. Velikol chafetz, right? What does that mean? And that's why it says in Pirka Avot, ein lecha tavar she'en lo makom ve'en lecha adam she'en lo sha'a. Everything has its space, everything has its place in creation, and everything has its time in the world. So there's always going to be time and space that we are traveling through. <coughs> so the common way that Chazal seemed to demonstrate the idea of time, and we'll see while we discuss this in relation to Pesach, it's going to work to everything. It's going to work to every Jewish holiday, but it's going to have special significance to Pesach, because Pesach is when we start to count time. What does that mean? We count time from Pesach. Pesach is not going to recount the beginning of creation. 
That happened in Tishrei. So why are we obsessed with Pesach and time? Why do they come together? Why do Pesach and time, how do they relate? This is fascinating. Because we start counting the months from Nisan. That's why the first mitzvah given to the Jewish people, the first mitzvah given to the Jewish people in Mitzrayim, to a nation, there were mitzvah before Mitzrayim, right? Like Puruvu, according to many people, Rashi included, to have children, to get married of kids. Brit and Mila came beforehand. However, the first mitzvah given to us as a collective in Egypt already was Hachodesh Hazeh Lachem. You have to start tracking time. So the first mitzvah given to the Jewish people was actually in Mitzrayim and started with Pesach. Start to track time. So when we count the months, the first month in the Torah is Nisan. It's Nisan. The first month is Nisan, which obviously is a month that Pesach falls in. So we start time in Nisan. Although the world wasn't created, there is an opinion, but we don't go with that. That's why you count. So the seventh month in the Torah is Tishrei, right? You start with Nisan. So at Nisan, we started what we call the Jewish calendar. How do we do that? We go according to the moon. We, right, the lunar calendar. We are loonies, the Jewish people. We really are. We follow the moon. And the moon waxes and wanes. And there's a, there's a lot of depth to this, because the moon increases in size and decreases in size. So to the Jewish people, increase. And sometimes we get hurt, and we wane as well. We go up and down. So too, that's why the moon, the, the moon, the Erech, is a metaphor for the Jewish people. But that's a deeper understanding. We'll get to that a little bit later. Didn't we say uh, that we follow the moon and the sun? Ah, so we follow the moon. That's our main way of doing it, okay? We follow the moon. Listen very carefully. This is very important information. We follow the moon, right? The moon renews itself, and so our months follow the moon cycle. But there's an extra challenge. The challenge for us, and by the way, Lahabdil, actually the Muslims as well follow, but they only follow the moon, which is why their holiday, Ramadan, is going to travel through the year. Why? Because they have a challenge that their holiday, their moon counting, only follows the moon, and they don't keep in sync with the solar calendar, the sun, which follows a very distinct pattern of 365 days a year, and a little bit. We have a problem. We follow the moon, and if we did that, there's an 11-day difference between the moon and the sun. So it would make sense that the moon holidays, or our holidays, would travel backwards through the year. Make sense? Because we're short by 11 days between the lunar calendar and the solar calendar. So what are we going to do? <coughs> we're going to have to keep, and why do we have to do this? We have to keep our holidays in the season. They are seasonal as well. Now, why is that true? Because it says, when it comes to Pesach, that Pesach has to fall in Chodesh Ha'aviv, which means the spring season. So now we have this. We have the following problem, or challenge, I should say. The challenge is, this is very careful, this is important information. The challenge is that the Jewish holidays follow, the Jewish months follow the moon. So the Jewish holidays will fall during moon months. But there's an 11 day difference. Which means if we just follow the lunar calendar, what's going to happen is, we're going to be out of sync by 11 days with the solar calendar every single year. So over the years, our months are going to travel through the solar calendar different seasons, and therefore you're going to end up with Pesach traveling backwards into February to January, and it's going to end up in the winter season. But the Torah itself says that can't be. Pesach must appear in the spring. Now why that is, is something we'll discuss as well when we get to it, but spring represents freedom, because all the plants and all the fruits and all the trees are now sprouting and blossoming. 
there's freedom in the air agriculturally. And so Pesach, which is also about freedom of people, the Jewish people, must be free as well. So Pesach must appear in the spring season. But it's not going to if we just follow the lunar calendar. Because remember, there's an 11-day difference. And that means Pesach will travel back through the year. And all the holidays, you'll end up with Yom Kippur in June. You'll end up with Shavuot in January. It's going to be a complete mess. Lahav, so you actually see Ramadan travels back. It's always at different times of the year. We cannot let that happen. So it goes like this. Here's the punchline. The lunar calendar is how we trace the year. But we have to stay in sync with the solar calendar. How are we going to do that? How can we stay in sync with the solar calendar? So every few years, twice every seven years or something, I think it helps that, we have a Shana Mu'uberet, a pregnant year. That's what literally, what is a pregnant year? Shana Mu'uberet, a Shana Ayan, a Shana Mu'uberet, why? We throw in an extra Adar, Adar Rishon and Adar Sheni. We have an extra Adar, we have Adar Rishon and Sheni. What does that do? So by throwing an extra month, you're pushing the holiday forward. Nathan, you've added an extra 30 days, whatever, into the calendar. So now you have to wait an extra 30 days for Pesach to come. Oh. By doing that, it's enough to keep Pesach in the spring season. Okay, so now we are sinking to some degree, not day by day, but we're sinking the lunar months, which ends up meaning the Jewish holidays, because they appear in the lunar month, into the solar calendar. Okay, and now we've kept a seasonal connection because there must be a seasonal connection between the Jewish holidays and whether it be springtime or for Hanukkah in the winter time, there's like a, a knock on, like a domino effect that kicks in for the other holidays. Once you put Pesach there and you start the calendar at that point, it's going to have a knock on effect to Shavuot and Sukkot will appear exactly when it has to between the summer season and the autumn, right? So everything in the fall, so everything's gonna fall out very, very nicely, but it kicks in at Pesach. Does everybody understand what I just said? Ahava. How often, every, how many years? I think twice every seven years or so it falls out, something like that. Something like that, yeah. Why don't we just add 11 days? Why do we have to add a full 30 day month? Well, we have to have an extra month. That's gonna push it further enough, and Adar Shemi takes care of it. Now, Adar Shemi, that second Adar, is when Purim, is going to fall because we know Purim, we have two Adars. So there's two potential Purims. So it's always going to be in the second Adar in a year when there are two Adars because Purim must appear 30 days before Pesach. Shloishim Yom Lepleachak. So when you do have a year with two Adars, this year is not such a year. You've got to be 30 days before Pesach. Okay, so when there are two Adars, it's always going to fall in the second Adar. Adar Shemi is the one that houses. But same date, so I could get all your Yes, yes, there. same date, just a month, quote unquote, late. Are we all clear on this? Okay, so that's what we've done now. Why is this important? So, uh, what is this going to do for us? So, as we said, we started with, we are going to travel not only through the months, we're going to travel through the seasons. How do we travel through? Why is this important? Okay? And what are we doing over here? Now, the Jewish holidays are called the Moadim. Remember, any Hebrew word I put on the board, you're going to need to know. Moad, in plural, Moadim. That's the plural, right? Yud Mem pluralizes the word. So Moad means, now we take it to mean a holiday, the Moadim, right? Are the Jewish holidays, right? Which comes from holy days. However, that's not what the word moed actually means. What does the word moed literally mean? Anybody know? You're a good girl. You listen so carefully in my previous classes. Somebody doesn't know, anyone want to have a guess? Where else we see the word moed? It's actually a, fun enough, it's actually a place. There's a place called the moed. We're going to connect time and space perfectly in this location. 
Inside the Mishkan? Inside the Mishkan. Go on, I'll tell What was it? Where was it? Where was this place? The Ohel Moed. The Ohel Moed. What was the Ohel Moed? That was the Holy of Holies in the Mishkan. So the word Moed, we take to mean holidays, but that's actually not what it means. It literally means a meeting place. It actually is going to refer to the ultimate meeting place. Who met there? Moshe Rabbeinu. Moses met God and received his prophecy in the Ohel Moed, which is just a way of saying the Holy of Holies in the Kodesh Kedoshim, in the Mishkan. Okay. So now we're like, wait a second. So the Jewish holidays are called a moed. Moed means a meeting place. How do I know that? Because there was a place called the Ohel Moed that was the ultimate meeting place of God and humanity. So why are the Jewish holidays called a meeting place? Who is meeting who on the Jewish holidays? We are meeting Hashem. <laughs> we, at certain points during the year, we, as it were, Kibichol, Meet God. Okay? Because the word Moed means a meaning place. How do I know that? Oh, Moed. And the Jewish holidays are called the Moedim. So we meet God. How? How does this happen? So the way to think of it says Rav Desla, who we just quoted before, and he says it's very simple. As you travel through the year, you get to various stops. It's like riding on a train. This is the way to think about it. You're on a train. And the train is going on the track. And then it's going to stop at a certain location, at that place, what he calls a tachana, a stop. You're going to get stuff. You're going to meet God and get certain things. So the first stop is Pesach. Pesach is the first stop that you will get to on your journey. Okay? Here's Pesach, right? Ooh, ooh, it's going to be the 15th of Nisan. And you're going to keep traveling. Now, I'm going to do it, those who know this already, that we're going to do it as a spiral. This is a spiral. What? <laughs> Sorry, it's just like... <laughs> it has to be a spiral. Why is that important? Time for us is not linear. It's not linear, right? If you open up a history book, Right? They always depict time as a line. Hence the expression, a timeline. This, for us, is incorrect. This does not have any relevance for the Jewish people. Really. I mean, you can depict history this way, but it's not, it's not reality. Meaning, here's one point, here's another point, here's another point, here's another point. So we have, I don't know, here's year zero, here's years, I don't know, 1492, right? Here's 15... 93, right? And here is 1948. Oh, no, 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 no. Why can we not do this? Why is this inaccurate? Because by doing so, we are dis... Listen very carefully. We're saying there's a past, there's a past, and there's a present, and there's no relationship. Because this isn't really a line. It's basically thousands of dots that go right across history. And there's no relationship here than anywhere else. Because this time is gone. Are you with me? This is the past, and there's no relationship. Mm -hmm. For example, we celebrate, uh, I don't know, Thanksgiving, okay? Which is on the fourth Thursday in November. <coughs> Who chose that date? I think FDR did. Right? I mean, Abraham Lincoln made that holiday, I think, but FDR. Is there any relationship between celebrating Thanksgiving now and Thanksgiving in the past? No. Could they have chosen any date? They did just chose a random date. Or July 4th. It just shows a date. There's no relationship between the original event and the date they chose. Can you see that? There's no relationship. Just a random date. Could they have chosen any date? Yeah, they did choose any date. Let's say they turn around and say, you know what, this year, it's not July 4th. It's going to be bad weather. Everyone's going to make barbecue. Let's make it July 6th. I'm like, all right. Mach what, what do I care? There's no relationship between the date and the event. They're two separate realities. We just choose a date in order to celebrate the event. That is not the Jewish view. 
the Jewish view is very different. It's going to have very important ramifications, as we're going to see. Very important. For us, it's not a timeline. It's a spiral. Not a circle. It's not going to be a circle. We don't say traveling through the years, traveling through a circle. Why not? Because then you end up in the exact same place you were a year ago, which would be pretty wild and highly inadvisable. Okay? So it can't be a circle, but it can be a, a spiral like those, you know, those parking lots, right? You're going forward through the year and you end up in the same place. This idea is encapsulated in the words of Chazal that we say in Al Anisim by Yama Mahem in those days. Bazman hazeh, but this is the time. This is the zman. So watch very carefully. This is gonna have, if you don't understand this, then basically Pesach is going to be completely irrelevant for you. It's going to be just like another holiday where you have to, like, you know, eat matzah. You see, here's the first ever 15th of Nisan, which started when? Mm. No. Creation of the world. What? Now, we don't know when it was and how it was. But God created time. Right. So there was this time over here. Could it be that someone could somehow tap into that date and know it's Pesach before Pesach even happens? Yeah. Happens. Is it possible, as an idea, that a person, I have this question, it's an amazing question, this, could be like, I know Pesach hasn't happened yet, but the time is still there because God created time. There's a fabric of time. It's always existed. So what happens is I'll get to this date, and I'll be like, ooh. It's Pesach time. Is that possible? I mean, you have to be like a spiritual genius to know this, right? Because we just better look at the calendar and figure it out. But it could be that a person could do that. And actually, Rashi tells us there is. Rashi tells us on Chumash that Avram Avinu, when the three guests, remember this, came to visit him, the three Malak, they came and it was Pesach, Rashi tells us. And he gave them ugot, which was matzah. Why says Rashi a little bit later? Because it was Pesach. One second. How could Abraham celebrate Pesach? We haven't even gone into Egypt yet. So the answer is because Pesach, listen very carefully, is not just an event. It's a time. A time of chirut, freedom. Zman, Pesach is called Herutenu is the time of freedom. It always was. It happens to be in the Jewish year 2448, the Jewish people left Egypt and we tapped into that time that was always there. But could a person have tapped into a year before? Yeah. By Yama Mahem. Bazman Hazer. The time of freedom always was. God created the fabric of time, and there's a, sta a station in this journey, this train track called Freedom Time, which means, listen to this wild idea, check this out, this will turn your brain to guacamole, that means we don't celebrate Pesach because the Jewish people left Egypt, it's the other way around, the Jewish people left Egypt because it was Pesach. get that? Say that again. We don't celebrate Pesach only because the Jews left Egypt. We left Egypt because it was Pesach. Meaning it was the time of Pesach. What does that mean? 15th of Nisan. So what? That's freedom time. Since when? Since God created the world. God created the world as a time called time. Avram Avinu, Abraham and Sarah were of a spiritual level of knowledge. Don't ask me how. I'm not a prophet. The Jewish people are no longer a profit organization. I can't tell you how, but they were able to exist in that time and be like, yeah, this is freedom. And they eat matzah. Why? Because matzah is freedom food. Now, we only got to see evidence of this at Pesach time. So matzah is more than just a food that the Jewish people left, ate while leaving Egypt. It's going to represent freedom. There's something about the food of matzah it represents freedom, and there's going to be something we'll get there eventually called chamet, which represents slavery. It's going to have to be that, right? Because Avram says, I'm eating matzah, Pesach. Why? The only reason we eat matzah is because the Jewish people left quickly and didn't have time for the dough to become bread, and they ate it quickly. No, 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 it's much deeper than that. No, matzah is going to represent the whole concept of freedom, and chamet, for some reason, 
that really fast up, which during the year is fine to eat. It's fine to eat it, right? On Shabbos is a mitzvah to eat chametz, read. Nice challah. But on t- freedom time, it represents spiritual death. Spiritual stationary reality. So the food is going to represent the time. Which is why Avram ate matzah on Pesach even before Pesach happened. Are we together on this? All right. Look at the bottom of page 54. We can summarize it. That's why each of the Jewish festivals carries a spiritual gift. One that gives us an inspiration throughout the entire year. The gift is the spiritual essence. So what's the gift of Pesach? What's Pesach really all about when it comes down to it? Yeah, not arguing with your grandparents, you know, and hearing all the, and all the thoughts. It's all about freedom. That's what it's all about. How do we tap into that? We're going to see. We eat matzah, drink four cups of wine, read the Haggadah, and all the other mitzvot. But the gift it's giving us is freedom. And can you see how it travels every year? Every year. Here's year one, and two, and three, and four we get to the same place just a year later. But I'm in the same location. Just like if I took it to Times Square on January 1st, okay? Times Square on January 1st. And I'm walking around and I say to you, you know, that was a lot of fun, let's go back again next year. I'm in the same place, but it's a year later. I'm in the same place, it's a year later. same thing. Every pace I'm in the same place, but it's a year later. There's like an accumulative effect. Therefore, I can tap in to all previous Pesachs at that time. I actually am leaving Egypt. Am I not? Because I'm in the same time. Okay, I'm not in the same place, but place is only part of the story. Time is the other part of the story. So the time itself reappears, and whatever they did at that time, I can do the same thing. Yes. There's a, little, there's a little bit, but it's also shut. It's also, it's a little bit deeper. There is a little bit of a Kabbalistic truth to this. But everyone, I mean, Rashi speaks about Pesach appearing beforehand. Right? He had to have an explanation for that. And Rashi gives us Peshat. So this is, this is really on a Peshat level as well. We get to the same time every year. We get to experience that thing one more time. But this is true for Jewish holidays, positive times, also negative times. Tisha B'Av. Right? Why are we fasting? Temple was destroyed a thousand years ago because that's a negative time. Your date of birth, your Hebrew birthday has a certain element. The Bible Rebbe speaks about this. It has a certain element of, of you were born on that day. That was the day Hashem decided you should be born. That's worth celebrating or reflecting on. So I'm a little fast on it. Yeah. So um, with this, this idea coming specifically from, from Pesach Nisan? No, it comes from... It's going to apply to all general. the holidays. When you get exactly when you get to Shavuot, we're going to get to Shavuot. We're going to see that's Torah time. Okay. Okay. We get to Sukkot. We did last semester. That's Emuna time. Remember this? We got Emuna time and Simcha time. And Purim is going to be a miracle. Now, now you appreciate how difficult it was for Mordechai and Esther to sell the idea of Purim. You can't create a time either it's always been there or not. They had to find some reference to it, and they did. In the Torah, right? Esam Torah Manayim, right? You can't just create a holiday. You can't either exist in time or it doesn't exist in time. We don't mess around with time. Time's a very holy, precious thing. Yeah. So this comes from the essence of time. And this comes from the essence of time. And somehow, Mordechai had to prove there was something in time that, that this was meant to be here. Do you know how they figured it out, by the way? Same with Hanukkah. A year later, they waited one year, and they're like, aha, uh-huh. I feel the essence is still here. And said it's a Jewish holiday. It took a year in order just to feel that day, say Chazal, and say, ah, this is the time. Lucky That's how they did it. The decree was over a year. Well, what? They're lucky the decree was over a year, yeah? No, the celebration. Oh, they redeemed the celebration. They waited oh, one year yeah. and said, aha, this is that. I feel it. Something's cooking over here. Mm-hmm. And they were able to, man, it took one year to kind of like let it settle in. And a year later, they all accepted it. But they also, he also started like the fast and everything in this time. No, they, right. they celebrated the day itself. The redemption I'm talking about. The saving. On the day itself, they celebrated. But why should that become a continual one? Megillah says, right, forever it's going to become, right, right, it should never go. That means a year later, it has to be like, mm-hmm, you're right, this is it. 
It's a big deal. Like Creer and holiday that everyone buys into, that means it had to have existed. And they go out of their way to show that Hanukkah always existed, we just got it at that time, and Purim always existed. It just, that was the reality that triggered off the whole entire holiday. So now we have, let's just finish up if you don't mind. Yeah, of course, I don't mind. Thank you. Page 55, each festival is a gift. So let's have a look. What are they, what's each Chag doing for us? So Shabbat, Shabbat is its own thing that appears every seven days, not once a year. So that's its own mini spiral, if you will, within the other spiral. But that consecrates life. Pesach is the physical creation of the Jewish people. That's because we were saved physically by leaving this Israel. Shavuot is the spiritual creation of the Jewish people at Har Sinai. So Sh- Pesach and Shavuot are really two sides of one journey. That's why we're going to end this semester by discussing Shavuot. You can't appreciate Pesach and it's with Shavuot. And you can't appreciate Shavuot until you appreciate Pesach, right? That's so why we're going to count and connect Pesach to Shavuot. We're going to count from Pesach to Shavuot. We don't count on Sukkot because they reflect each other. Okay? Mm-hmm. Rosh Hashanah and Kippur are the examination of life. Sukkot mean? is the physical survival of the Jewish people. Wait, wait, wait. What does the examination of life mean? We have to examine what we're doing during our life. So it's its own little thing. Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur appear as their own reality. Then we have Sukkot, which is the physical survival of the Jewish people, right, through the tent or through the clouds of glory. And then we see Shemini Atzeret is the spiritual survival. So what begins on Sukkot ends with Shemini Atzeret, although they're actually two different holidays. They arc one to the other over an eight-day period. Then we have Purim, and that's the physical survival of the Jewish people in Galut, when you don't see God. And Hanukkah is the spiritual survival of Jewish people when we're in exile. This is Rabbi Hirsch, by the way. He maps out how each holiday reflects on the other, and each one does something else for us. Okay? So that is your entire year of travel, where you get to, and what that particular time of year is doing for you. Okay? So Pesach, we're going to see is Zman Heretainu. Shavuot uh, is man Torotenu. And Sukkot is man Simchatenu, of our joy. And each one reflects what's happening in it. So that is how time is going to reveal to us what Pesach is really all about. Okay. Have a wonderful Purim. Thank you. I'll see you all for our midterm next Monday. Baba Chag Sameach.